In this video, we'll be going over how to use this component called deconstruct plane, and it's really useful. And uh, so I'll be going over how I use it. All right, so to start, we're going to bring in an arc, so double click and bring in the arc component. Now let's take this arc and instead of having it by default here in the plane, let's bring in a Y Z plane. This we can, we can use this as our reference plane to create our um, arc. Now, automatically, it's going to give us a radius of one. So let's change that to something like 50. So I'm double clicking and going to a slider 50. We can give it the radius size. So now the angle is the tricky part because if I were to type in, let's say 45, for 45 degrees, you would think that this would go to 45 degrees, or if it were 90, that it would work. But as you can see, it doesn't work until you change it to radians. And this is because when you take a look at the input here in the angle, you'll see that it says angle domain and radians. So we can change this angle in degrees into radians with this input. And with the output, as you can see, now we have the ability to uh, be more subtle with our angles and know exactly what we're trying to do here. So next thing that we'll do is take this arc and extrude it out. So I'll double click here, and go to extrude, and I'll extrude this arc uh, perpendicular to this plane. The way that I do that is using amplitude. I like to plug in the plane for the vector, and this creates an amplitude um, perpendicular to that plane. So we can bring in a slider here. Uh, let's see, five. This is going to be the amount that it will be extruded. So we can plug in our arc for our base extrusion, and then use this vector here for our direction. As you can see, this is going to be in the positive direction, and that is also uh, shown here. Uh, and we can change all of these. So let's go to 60. Go all the way around. Now with this, we can bring in something like surface frames. So let's go to frame surface frames and we can plug in this extrusion here into the surface frames to basically create um, reference plane reference planes that are perpendicular to the form uh, and this will allow us to draft out an object here uh, that then we can project also perpendicular to that plane so let's take this UMB count and change this to 5 and I'll plug in U and V count for with five. This way we can decrease the amount. Uh, we can always increase the amount uh, later. So now that I've created these uh, surface frames, let's uh, create an object here. Uh, one of the things I like to do is rather than using all the frames at once, I like to go to list item. and plug in the frames into the list. And you'll see that um, it's actually a grafted list. So we need to flatten the input. This way it only selects one. Um, so what I'll do is take this and go to a point component. And what it'll do is turn that frame into a point. Now we can take that point and move it around um, so uh, to create like a pattern or something, uh, we can take this and with this surface frame, if we want to move something along this frame, rather than just the, X, the origin point or the X, Y, Z point here, what we need to do is bring in a component called deconstruct plane. Deconstruct plane 
will give us this plane and it'll give us the x and y that we can move it. So if we were to bring in a move component, we can use amplitude for the x and plug in our point for our geometry. So amplitude is going to have one, so let's change that to 1.5 C, the movement of the point relative to the original reference frame. Now let's move this in the opposite direction by just bringing in a negative component. And we can plug in this output to the value and plug this as an additional out input holding down shift. So it will do both directions this way. And let's go and do the next one, which will be another amplitude component. And we can plug in our 4.3 to the amplitude, our y axis. And now we can move this also in this direction and bringing in the negative direction holding down shift you can basically move that point relative to that reference frame so some uh let's see what this looks like so if i bring in a polyline i think the organization is opposite. So we can always change the way that this is organized. Um, so we're going to take these points and take the motion and disconnect all of them. Why? Because we want to slowly create a polyline with all of these endpoints. So Geometry, it's going to be this point. Now we're going to go one at a time. So let's go positive x. Then we're going to go positive y, holding down shift. Then we're going to go negative x, going to be x negative, holding down shift. And then the last one. Now, technically, we can go to close, set boolean, and then true. So we've technically just created this um, rhombus going up and down perpendicular to the frame. And we can do that to all of them by going here to graft, but it would actually, yeah, it'll do it to all of them. Um, now, if we have this, we can also round off the edges of it. So as you can see, all we're doing is um, working on a different reference frame, which is cool because we can align it to any surface. Let's go plug in the curve here and bring in another value to round off the edges of the circles here. We'll take this one, disable preview. But as you can see, the other issue that comes up is that now all of these, the entire pattern is offset from that surface. And we don't want that. What we want is to, for it to be flush with the surface. Um, for this, we need to project. So we'll go to project curve along uh, onto a B-Rep. So I'll bring this in. We'll plug in the curve into the curve here. We need to make sure to flatten the output. This way, it does the entire list at once rather than these groups. So we'll flatten this. B-Rep is going to be our extrusion from back here. So um, if you have two outputs, I'd like to double click on the wire. You'll get a relay and we can use that as our output. As you can see, it's projecting it down. So it's 
just automatically it's going to go zero zero one which means up and down and you know for the most part that tends to work but when you start getting to the ones down here it won't work it would work if it's perpendicular to the direction so for this actually we do need to or instead of flattening it the direction needs to be the same frame plugged into the direction so it will project perpendicular to this frame making it um, flush with that and we can now hide the original that is projected in. I've gone over a few things. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. But for the most part, this was what I wanted to show. It was this component where we can deconstruct a plane or a surface frame that is anywhere. And that frame we can use to create uh, objects like this, uh, this pattern. We can change this also. And it'll be <clears throat> created right on that surface. With that being said, let's increase some of these numbers. And you'll see that also is to so have more in one way. And of course, since it's parametric, we can always change this round, change the size of it. And the surface frame is what making it look kind of hard to see. here. So what I'm doing is selecting the stuff and disabling the preview. And lastly, if you want to do the last thing on this, it would be to split the surface. The surface split, we can use the curves as our cutting object, flatten the input on it. Oh, that was graphed. And the surface will be the this B rep that got projected on. We'll do a relay here so we don't have to go all the way back. And as you can see, we have different. So let's go here, disable preview. And with this, we can do a item, list item, doing this object here. Let's go to reverse. And now we have our leftover. We can just disable preview here, disable the preview of the original. And now we have perforated it using that pattern. Like I said, if you have any questions, make sure to let me know. I'll have this one on the site under YouTube videos. Um, make sure to subscribe if you like the content. I'll be posting more videos like this one um, where I try to explain some of the most important components uh, for Grasshopper because it's really like if you're just getting started it's really kind of scary to see all these components and all this stuff going on so my duty is to kind of walk you through some of those things that seem kind of scary so uh thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time if you have any questions or any other ideas let me know if you want to get in contact with me check out my website cafetidavid.com there you can find a way to contact me also courses and scripts for Rhino and Grasshopper. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.